What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here, Carlos Quintanilla. Hot takes. You already know. Second episode today. I actually had a recommendation uh, to watch this channel known as CNBC Make It with their series of Millennial Money. And there was this video that came out about a week ago that kind of caught my attention, and it was living on 75k a year in Los Angeles. So we're gonna be watching that today. We're gonna get our, you know, hot take reaction. Hot takes basically just my opinion, what I think about what the guy is saying, and along the way, give my thoughts. All right, let's get ready to this. Connect my AirPods, let's go. When I was younger, I thought 40 was just so far, just so far up there, like you're a grown up at that point, right? And so I feel like I should have the things together, but I don't have it all together. And I'm learning that that's okay. I wanna make sure that, that I'm setting myself up for success and that part of that success is making sure that I'm financially free. Whoa, he looks really good for a 40 year old. I just wanna say that he looks way younger. I thought he was gonna be like 25, 28 at least. He's 40, he looks really good for his age. My name's Isaac Diaz, I'm 40 years old, Isaac. I make $75,000 a year, and I live in Los Angeles. Being from San Diego was amazing, but I did move right after high school up to LA to go to college and I basically never left. And what I really, really love about LA is that it's where you wanna be if you're pursuing a career like I am in the media industry. It's the Mecca. There is no other place that is so concentrated with these types of creative professionals. And the networking is incredible. I've met an amazing set of friends here. Yeah, of course. LA is the place to be, but because everything's online, well, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to do like YouTube, like me, you can do that from anywhere. But if you're trying to do actual like television stuff, then yeah, LA is the place to be. LA, Hollywood, hey, good choice. When I was younger, I had a credit card and maxed it out on who even knows what it was just stuff that I didn't need, but there was no one to tell me, hey, this is how you navigate a credit card, or this is how you use credit. There was a time where my credit just wasn't very good. I didn't have any savings. I didn't know anything about retirement accounts, 401k, investments, none of that. And so once I started talking to my peers and my friends, I started saying, hey, they have things going on. They're, they're buying property or they're investing in things. And I just started asking questions and reading a lot. And so, I sucked it up and said, I'm just tack my debt full on. I don't have any credit card debt. Thankfully, I pay that off every month if I do use my credit card. I've been able to knock down my debt little by little. What's his debt? Okay. Okay. I wanna knock out all this debt so my debt to income ratio is much better for when I do go and pursue property, when I do go get that loan to be able to get property that I've been striving for for a long time. And good for him for attacking his debt, but I mentioned this in the last video, Latinos and talking about debt and all these other things, so terrible, so bad. I mean, come on, like he's 40, and he's like, man, and I realized that I wasn't taught these things. Now, I don't know what his upbringing was. He hasn't talked about it, but he is prime example that a lot of us aren't really talked to or taught the stuff that we should learn, you know, in school. People think that in school you learn everything when, I mean, now, yeah, they're adding financial classes, which is a good step in the right direction. And a lot more young people are becoming financially aware. Yeah. While I am pursuing these goals, I still need to live my life. I'm a big LA Chargers fan, and so I budget in season tickets. And every year is I have a, uh, a fee that I share with two other friends, and we have such a great time. We travel the country, see other football stadiums, and follow our team. We always try to, try to do at least one away game every season.
So my health is something that I've really, really been prioritizing over the past year. At the beginning okay. of the pandemic, with gyms closing, I just ate whatever I wanted. I gained quite a bit of weight and I got to a point where... Okay, this is what I wanted to see, which was his, uh, you know, his basically his, his, his budget, his monthly budget. I'm actually... Man, I made a video, my hard drive crashed, but I made a video on how to budget and what you gotta do in order to survive on a limited income. And I want, this is what was curious about. So rent and utilities, we can see he pays around 1,500. I'm assuming he lives on his own. Oh, well, I haven't heard about any wives or any kids. Don't know that, about that yet. Uh, his car payment, oof. That's a hefty amount, 664. Is that with the insurance? No. Just the car by itself? Is that what, uh, okay. So a lot of times whenever you go and get yourself a new car, um, they put you a monthly, but if you want to get with that loan taken care of faster, you pay extra. Um, for a 2013 car with only $5,000 left, I don't think that's the amount that should be being paid, that's kind of expensive. Unless it, okay, his credit was bad. He probably did this with no credit. Damn, yeah, man, that's rough. His savings and investments aren't that high, really. Or maybe that's how much he's putting away for saving and investment every month. That's not the exact amount, amount that he has. Could be. Sorry about that. So his savings and investments, 619. I'm assuming that's how much he puts away every month. His food is 513. Ah, yeah. Okay. Eats out. Okay. Does uh, his entertainment stuff. Insurance and therapy. Okay. 220. So that's where I assume the insurance, whether it could be dental, whatever, goes into doing that stuff. Discretionary. Or does this laundry, household, uh, appliances. Uh, household supplies, charger tickets. Okay. That's basically what the other discretionary is. His student loans, he pays $69 a month. Subscriptions, he pays $45 for all of those. Amazon Prime, Costco, Hulu, Netflix, Sirius XM. Um, the gym, $31. His phone bill is $30 a month. That is really good. But, I mean, overall, nice budget. Uh, I feel like... I feel like he's paying too much for his car and also um, the subscriptions, but not bad, honestly. If we're following the Dave Ramsey route, then you'll see that he'll say to pay off the student loans because student loans typically is the biggest debt that most people have. And in Isaac's case, uh, I am seeing that it's, you know, it is even more than his car payment. And he's paying way less for his student loans than he is for his car. So he'll have his car paid off way before he has his student loans paid off. But, you know, he's paying it off fine. Keep going. Where I just was not healthy and I was tired all the time. I did not want to feel that way. I bought some resistance bands. I pulled up a couple YouTube videos and just started working out. I was started running in my neighborhood and shed about 30 pounds. Good for him. Good for you. Now like that said, gyms are open, we can now go back, which I'm so grateful for because there's so much more equipment that we can utilize at the gym. For me, it's well worth it, especially if I'm going four to five times a week. But I feel amazing. I feel great. If I can work out outdoors, <laughs> if I can run outdoors, that's more equipment that we can what was that lady utilize doing? at the gym. For me, it's well worth it, especially if I'm going four to five times a week. But I feel amazing. I feel great. If gyms? I can work out outdoors <laughs> or if I can run outdoors, that's something that I really, really enjoy. Ooh, those burns. Producer, Being years. a freelance producer, video producer especially, is a very, very tough road. If you don't put in the work, you're not gonna eat. And I needed to pay bills. If I didn't get work, I wasn't paying my rent. There was no food on the table. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I'm sitting here 35 years old and having to move from an apartment that I was maintaining on my own back home with my parents. I felt I was in a really dark place at that time. I didn't have any job opportunities. 
the freelance was dried up and I did not feel very successful at all. My mom actually helped me say, hey, look, you need to get up, you need to dust yourself off, get back out there. That really helped me get back on my feet and got me back to being consistent and, and honestly just built my self-esteem back up. Wow. If it wasn't for mom, I, I don't know where I would be right now. I did meet Damn. a lovely woman uh, last year. There were a lot of video dates. There were a lot of tests to make sure that each other felt safe. And we even went as far as to moving in together recently. Things happen in life. Unfortunately, oh. that didn't work out. But I take the lessons from that and I try, I'm trying to move forward. Good, good. Something that you mentioned is that this year, a lot of people had to become creative. A lot of virtual dates. Um, I heard of people and, and even, you know, personally doing the, like, the virtual dates where one person will be eating in their place and then the other person in eating in their place. And then you can still talk via FaceTime or whatever you use. And a lot of people had to become creative. Like this year was the year of creativity. So interesting that he talks about that, during, that dating during the pandemic. Unfortunately for him, it didn't work out. Um, probably the relationship they moved in too soon. Could have waited a little longer. Yeah, I mean, in order for someone to to actually get to know somebody, it takes a little longer than, than a few months. It takes some time, but yeah, I mean, I guess learning process, everything. Oof. Being fresh out right. of a relationship is not Two, the easiest ago? thing in the world. Yeah. I know a lot of people can relate that breakups aren't easy. So right now I don't really have an apartment of my own per se, or even a place to stay. So I'm staying with friends and family. And so just keeping my head up through this time as well. But living out of a suitcase is not fun. Mm. Growing up, money really wasn't something that we talked about in the family. As I got older, and as I started navigating my own journey, it's become more important because it's necessary. Investing is something that's been very important to me and it's something that I'm still very new at, but I do like to be able to put money somewhere and see it grow. One of those is crypto. I've diversified a little bit into other crypto coins, Ethereum. Crypto, Coinbase, all of those things. I think are very great, especially for um, people who don't have social securities to be able to invest in places such as Robinhood. Coinbase is a great option. Now, the reason why crypto is so um, integral to the future, I was recently watching an Andre Jick video about this, that um, about how the, the, the whole purpose of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is about decentralized currency, basically meaning that um, centralized is when there's an entity or a body governing the well the use of it and how it can be managed so like banks the government things like that but when it comes to crypto it's decentralized meaning it's ran by nobody only of like uh, equations mathematics and, and and the internet really that's how cryptocurrency works and it's becoming um, a global currency which is uniting people because um, recently I saw an article where the, the Salvadorian president, uh, Nayib Bukele, he was talking about using volcanoes as, as, use, as use for Bitcoin to, to Bitcoin mine and everything, which, you know, so now you can um, take the, you know, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and take it to different places in the world and they'll accept it compared to like uh, regular currency, where it's just like the dollar bill. You take the dollar bill to Africa, it's a different currency. You take it, the dollar bill over to Europe, and what is it? It's, it's, a, it's a euro, it, <laughs> quetzales, it's, it's, you know, pesos. There's, there's different stuff. So um, the yen, right? There's different currencies, but the uh, what, what cryptocurrency is doing is unifying it's a, kind of like a global um, currency. And honestly, a lot of people should get into. Get on it. Ethereum, Dogecoin. I believe I've more than doubled Dogecoin. my money at this point. And so <laughs> the good is I'm trying coin. to figure out, do I put more money into it? Do I take my yes. initial investment out? I haven't no. made that decision yet. I had the opportunity. It's 401k. If you, depends who you are, really. My, my thoughts on 401k. I think 401k is good if it's provided by an employer, but if it's by yourself, you're better off with a Roth IRA. 
opportunity to invest in a 401k and past positions, but I just was not savvy enough. I didn't like the idea of money being taken out of my check. I didn't understand that, no, this is a good thing. You wanna have this money taken out of your check. I definitely feel like I'm playing catch up financially because there's a lot of my peers that are that are much far ahead, but at the end of the day, it's what, what do I do with, with my money? And I feel like I'm making much, much better decisions now and I'm able to get ahead now. There's something that I've told everybody is that you can never compete with everyone. You can only compete with yourself. If you're trying to compete with other people, oh, look at that person, look at that person, you're gonna get discouraged and never start. As a matter of fact, this person could probably have felt like that. Isaac could have probably felt that way that he's like, I'm not gonna make it. I'm, I'm kind of late to the party, but he got started. Guess what? Now look at that. 13K in his 401K and a thousand in his individual retirement account. It was saves around, oh, not bad. It's something. Being 40 doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. Being 40 doesn't mean that you have to have all those things that you thought you needed to have together. It's. I want to stop it right there because that's so crazy. That's so crazy. I'm 22 right now. And whatever I think of when I'm 40, I think of already having it done. And for, the, for him just to say that, it's kind of like a man, like a wake up call. Like I can literally do so much and then nothing and have nothing to show for it. And by the time I'm 40, but even then you can still do something. I believe that um, Colonel Sanders started his business with KFC in his like 50s or 60s. I don't remember at the moment. So he was <laughs> ahead, but damn, like as a young person hearing that, that's crazy. That's crazy. Just saying. It's something that I'm learning. Now, I am working full time, thankfully in a job that I love and that I'm passionate about, but marriage and kids, that just hasn't happened for me yet. And I'm okay with that. And now I can take what I've learned in my 30s and apply that to my 40s, things like the finances, things like paying things off, or even buying property, As or just tacos. enjoying life. And so that's what, that's what 40 nice. presents to me. Hey, enjoy your life. Just have a good time. Happy birthday to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, honestly, great video. But living on living in California requires so much out of you nowadays. And he's saying he's making 75k a year. That's crazy. That's crazy that that's not enough for anywhere else. I uh, anywhere else. Making that much money, he could have had a house and he could have been pretty good. He could have had a, a good car and everything. But in California, especially Los Angeles, Los Angeles, San Diego, uh, San Francisco, these are places that require a lot out of you. And it's really tough to work here and to live here, honestly. Uh, the quality of life is a little bit more difficult. Obviously, there's so many good things here. There's Disneyland, there's Six Flags, there's Universal, there's the beach nearby, there's the mountains over there, there's Big Bear. There's a lot of places where you can say, you know, it's worth it to live here. And yes, it is. But you you got to make that decision for yourself. 75K a year is um, getting him by. He says that he's he's making it, but he's not really making it that, to where he would like to be, right? Um, and it's something that I think we could all relate to. We could all wish we were making a lot more. We would be living like Logan and Jake Paul, or we would be like, you know, we're living well, but we don't, not always. And a lot of times some people move, but um, I, as a person who lives here in California, I've there's been months that I've had to seek ways to survive and it's not been something easy. It's been kind of difficult. So that's why this video is so crazy to me because He's 40, living here, making 75K, which for many people is a great salary. And he's saying he's still trying to make it. So interesting, interesting. But it all depends on a lot of things, a lot of things. So guys, we're gonna finish this video there. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you guys have any more suggestions or any other videos that you'd like for me to react and watch to, leave a like, subscribe, and also comment down below, interact with the video somehow, because doing that honestly does a huge impact to the channel. That guys, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.